Assalamu alaikum everyone and today we are going to be talking about set theory. So a bit of a tangent. Uh, so a few days ago we saw the football world cup it was amazing argentina won anyways it's one of the greatest tournaments of football now it's some of my friends literally consider it as a war zone and similarly in math we had a sort of war well it's a debate but i'm a dramatic person in this war fine debate uh, we looked at a lot of things we had to restructure the entire foundation of mathematics we took 379 pages to prove one plus one is equals to two yes and in the end we found out math is an incomplete we don't know if it's cons consistent and undecidable field of logic Phew, that escalated quickly. So, how did we get here? Well, we have to look at Georg Cantor's discovery of set theory. Today, we're going to be looking over at set theory. So, what is set theory? In algebra, we've been learning about different kinds of sets, you know, set of these numbers and these functions, etc, etc. So what is a set? A set is just a well-defined collection of things or a collection of elements. Sets can be finite they can, or they can be infinite sets. Uh, these two types of sets are known as disjoint sets because they can never meet. A uh, finite set cannot be the same as an infinite set and an infinite set cannot be the same as a finite set. And a few things before we start more on this video. Uh, sets are written with these curly brackets. You may have seen these before. So keep that in mind for the notation we'll be using. So, any number that can be plugged into a function would have the domain of that function be the set of all real numbers, as seen here. Here, y is equals to x, and the domain will be the set of all real numbers, which is negative infinity and through infinity. And these are written as parentheses because it implies non-inclusivity. We can never ever reach to infinity, but we can get very close. So this is basically saying it's in between infinity and negative infinity, but negative infinity and infinity are not in the in part of the set. This is also good for expressing inequalities. For example, x is greater than 3. Here, the domain is parentheses 3 comma infinity here it's in parentheses because we can never get to 3 because the x is greater than 3 if the expression was x is greater than or equal to 3 then the this would be written as bracket three comma infinity parentheses. So the square bracket here is referring to how the number is included in the set. What we just looked over here is known as interval notation and there are three types of interval. The open interval that is between A and B where A cannot be reached and B cannot be reached all numbers between them. In the closed interval, we write it as closed back bracket. Here it is A through B, except A and B are included in the set. And infinite intervals are basically any sets that uh, have the intervals infinity in them. Now, some sets are not all these generalized, like the set of all real numbers the set of all natural numbers, set of all complex numbers. Instead, 
Some sets are just simply collections of elements. Say we have set A, who, who, which has the elements 1, 2, and 3. Set B has the collection of elements, that is 2, 4, and 6. Now, what can we do with these sets? Well, we can define the union and the intersection of these sets. Now we've entered the fun part. What is an intersection? An intersection is basically some element that is in both set A and set B. And it is written with this upside down uppercase U sign. Or at least that's how I like to call it. So this is the intersection. For the sets that we saw here, we'll write it as A intersection B is equals to 2 okay, uh, because 2 is the only element. And remember, this is also a set. So we put the curly brackets in them. Uh, this just has one element, but in other sets, we can have many, many elements. So what is a union? A union is any element that is in set A and set B. So it's all the elements. Uh, this it can be expressed with a capital U in it. So A union B is equals to 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, and 6. Then there is the null set or the empty set. Say we have this set of, no, of all odd numbers. 1, 3, 4. 5 and so on and so forth. Then we have all even numbers 0, 2, 4, 6, so on and so forth. Here A union B is equal to and we just add curly brackets there without any element in them or we use the simple phi which is a Greek letter. It looks like a zero with a line across it. Remember this, a null set or empty set is not equal to zero because zero is an element. So if it has an element, then it's not an empty set anymore. So an empty set has nothing in it, not even zero. That's why it's an empty set. So we've gone over the basics. Now let's go over some of the more interesting parts. There is the symmetric difference, which is expressed as this triangular shape, which is actually capital delta. So here, what, the, what is the symmetric difference? The symmetric difference is a fancy way of saying that the element is in either set A or set B, but not both. So it's basically the union minus the intersection. So looking over our previous ones, A, the symmetric difference of A and B is equals to 1, 3, 4, and 6. We skimmed over the 2 because the 2 is in both sets. Now let's look over the subset. The subset is F that Every element in A is an element in B here. So the, the notation is this. And in this example, if C is equal to A intersection B, then C is a subset of A and C is also a subset of B because C has every element in C is in and uh, is an element in A but also an element in B that's why we use an intersection then there is a proper subset a proper subset is when every element in A is an element in B but B also has an element that is not in set A now we have another type of symbol. It is known as is an element of, and it is written with this that looks a lot like me. If A is an element of A, it's an object that belongs to a set. So 
say 2 is an element of A. Then we have a complementary. Now this is not the same as how it is in geometry, say complementary angles, where the two angles combine to 90 degrees. This is a different type. Uh, it is uh, written like this, and it is basically any element that is not in set A. Now we have to be careful about this because if we are led to use this whenever, then we can have an infinite set, which is no meaning, which we can't work with. This introduces us to a concept known as universal sets. Universal sets basically when we have imagined that these are the elements that will work in this system. So say you're rolling a, I don't know, die, two die, this right? So those two die will combine to have different results, right? So the elements will be 1 through 12. So now here, A is all the odd numbers in this universal set. So not A will be all the even numbers in this universal set. And about the debate, we're gonna, I could make a ton of videos about a lot of things that happened there, but that is for another day. Anyway, it's been a lot. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below if you, wa um, if you want to let me know of anything, if I missed anything, or if you have a problem with something. And make sure to share this video to anyone who might need it. And thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.